Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I'm going to be showing you what I consider to be the best type of Pokemon deck. Now, when I say type, I am referring to, I don't know, elemental type, I suppose you could call it. So, we've got grass Pokemon, and water Pokemon, and fighting Pokemon, but I don't think they're the best type in the trading card game at the moment. Oh no, I believe that it is dark type Pokemon. Now we need to start with a disclaimer. Dark decks are incredibly varied. My aim in this video, like in all of this style of video, which I should add I'm going to start doing more of as I am today because feedback has been good, views have been good, comments have been good, likes have been good. People have been making it clear they like these style of videos, so let's keep them coming. Now, as I always do in this style of video, I am going to show you the key cards, the key strategies. I'm going to introduce you to the main things, and I'm going to hopefully start a discussion. I am not going to be able to hit every single tiny little point. And the thing about these dark decks is they are incredibly varied. So especially when I talk about matchups, you've got to bear that in mind. I'm going to be talking about some matchups, and I'm going to say, oh, you know, dark decks might struggle about this. And you might be thinking, well, hang on a second. I've got this dark deck, and actually, it destroys that deck you're talking about. And the answer may well be, yeah, it does. But I'm going to be talking generally, talking about normal builds, the kind of things, the kind of ways that people are usually playing it. I'm also going to be focusing largely on the expanded format, which is a format that dark decks have been absolutely dominating. That is black and white on. But we're going to have a quick chat about standard at the end. So starting off with the main Pokemon involved. And let's start with the Pokemon that probably is the big daddy at the moment. Evil Tal EX. And he's got two very good attacks. You just kind of start off a 10 attack. You've got Y Cyclone. And what Y Cyclone does is it does 90 damage for free energy. Now that might not sound amazing. But of course let's not forget ladies and gentlemen. That double colorless energy is a thing. So you get one dark energy. One double colorless energy. You do 90 damage. That alone is pretty good. That's alright. But it also allows you to take an energy card attached to Evil Tal and move it to one of your bench Pokemon. Now that sounds pretty gosh darn good to me. Let's say for argument's sake you've got two Evil Tal, one in the active, one on the bench. You do 90 damage and then you move the double colorless to the benched Evil Tal. Which means that if the active Evil Tal were to be KO'd, you have saved that double colorless energy. I say you get to, I mean, you know, you have to. I'm just saying it's a bonus bonus that you can enjoy. It's a it's a forceful thing. You have to move the energy. But you've also got Evil Ball, which is basically a souped up version of Mewtwo EX's X Ball. 20 damage for every energy attached to both active Pokemon, plus 20 as a base. Now this does mean that for people commentating games like myself, it gets complicated, but this is the kind of card that is going to teach your kid to count, at least in intervals of 20. And what you can do in any matchup, whenever you're struggling, is pile a whole bunch of energy on an evil tally X and hit for a huge amount of damage. We've got Darkrai EX, and actually we've got two Darkrai EXs. And what both Darkrai EXs do quite nicely is they cover the weakness. Evil Tal EX is weak to lightning, which means that if you end up in an awkward situation where you're facing an entirely lightning style deck, well that can be pretty gosh darn awkward. Darkrai is weak to fighting, so when against a lightning weak deck, you can be attacking with Darkrai, and you are no longer weak to lightning with a Pokemon that's giving up two prizes. And Darkrai comes in two flavours. The Dark Explorer's flavour of Darkrai, for free energy, does 90 damage, and 30 to one of your, bench, your opponent's bench Pokemon. And this allows you to set up multiple KOs. Let's say you do a whole bunch of damage, your opponent goes to the bench. Ha ha ha, you can't, oh you've hit me with Night Spear, now I've had the last amount of damage done, now my Pokemon is knocked out. 90 damage is enough to 2 hit KO most EX Pokemon, 
and you get to do 30 damage to the bench as well. Now, if you happen to face something like a 30 HP Feebas, that it, or a Joltic, which is probably more relevant, you are going to get a one-hit KO on them. But what it does is it allows you to set up multiple KOs. And even we've got a card like N, and the quicker you take prizes, the more vulnerable you are to your opponent playing an N and lowering your hand size. So, Darkrai allows you to take multiple prizes in one turn and make yourself less vulnerable to N. I should also mention the ability of Darkrai that gives free retreat to all of your Pokemon with Dark Energy attached. That's pretty useful. But in the latest Pokemon TCG set Breakpoint, we also got a new Darkrai EX. And this has a really nice, well, two really nice attacks. Firstly, Dark Pulse. 20 damage plus 20 more for each dark energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Now this is really, really useful. You get a whole bunch of dark energy on the board, and we'll talk about how to do that in a moment. And then you get to do a whole bunch of damage. But here's the beautiful thing about this. You can spread the dark energy among all of your bench Pokemon, and then Darkrai does the attack for just one double colorless energy. Which means your opponent's going to want to knock out that active Darkrai. They're going to want to take down Darkrai in order to stop him hitting for a whole bunch of damage. But when they knock out the Darkrai, you don't lose all of the energy that's on your bench. And this is a rare kind of Pokemon attack where you get to do a whole bunch of damage without risking most of the energy on the field. Take something like a Primal Groudon, you attach four energy, Primal Groudon goes down, you lose all four of those energy. Not so with Darkrai, and that is really, really good. It's also got a really good attack, Dark Head. 80 damage, but if you can put your opponent's active Pokemon to sleep, it does 160 damage. You put a Muscle Band onto Darkrai, or you play a hypnototic laser or something like that, and you can get up to 180 damage and enough damage to get one hit KOs. We're also going to talk about a stadium later that does an extra 10 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, and that hits for 170 then, which is enough to KO a lot of EX Pokemon. How do you put them to sleep? We're going to talk more about these cards later, but you've got Hypnotoxic Laser and you've got Hypno, and they seem to be the best ways to put your opponent to sleep. Also, one we're not going to talk a huge amount about is Malamar EX. Now, as if those three big EXs weren't good enough, we've also got two baby Evil Tails. Hey, Nick, if you're watching, by which I mean non-EX Evil Tails. Now, we've got the X and Y Evil Tail, and he's got one really good attack and one occasionally useful attack. The really good attack does 30 damage and allows you to attach a dark energy to one of your benched Pokemon. It's called Oblivion Wing. Now, obviously, you can use cards like the Dark Stadium, like Muscle Band, like Hypnotoxic Laser to do more than 30 damage. But you get to accelerate energy doing this. And as we've already seen, Darkrai EX does more damage depending on how many energy you have on the field. Evil Tally X does more damage depending on how much energy is attached to Evil Tally X. And let's not forget that cards like Darkrai EX, the Dark Explorers one, need free energy just to start off. So you need to get this energy onto the field, and Evil Tail helps you to do that. It slows you down a little bit, but it gets more energy on the field. It also does 100 damage for free energy. Flip a coin if Tails you can't attack next turn. And that's not amazing, really. Free energy on a Darkrai EX or an Evil Tail EX would be better. But let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that he gives up one prize. And if you add 10 damage to this, it's enough to get a one-hit KO on something like a Shame in EX, which is pretty gosh darn useful. And we've got the new Evil Tal from Breakpoint. And this is arguably even better. What he allows you to do is 60 damage to the active Pokemon and 60 damage to a benched EX. Now, this is a really, really good attack. What you do again here, and it's very similar to Dark Explorer's uh, Darkrai EX here, and there is not a small amount of synergy, in that you get to set up multiple KOs. They've even named it similar, Knight's Beer P. 
pitch black spear. And here you can take down cards like Shaman EX and Jirachi EX, who have 110 and 90 HP respectively, both of whom will get KO'd on the bench to two bl pitch black spears. And while you're doing this, you can be working on KOing your opponent's active Pokemon. Through a combination of Hypnotoxic Laser and the Stadium, you can actually be two-hit KOing both your opponent's active EX and a Shaman or Jirachi on the bench, taking four prizes in one turn. It's an attack which initially looks underpowered, but oh my goodness does it add up pretty gosh darn quickly. Now, he's also got a very useful ability, Fright Knight. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each tool card in play has no effect. Now, I do not have time to go into the myriad of uses of this particular card, but I'll give you two. Number one, an awful lot of decks rely on Caldeo and Floatstone to act as a perpetual switch. Caldeo's ability gets to jump into the active, and then Floatstone gives him free retreat. Well, they can't do that with Evil Tal Active, because they can go into the active, but then Floatstone does nothing, and they have a retreat cost of two. The other thing this is really good for is your opponent's Spirit Link tools. Those are tools which allow you to Mega Revolve a Pokemon without ending your turn. Well, as soon as Evil Tal's in the active, all of your opponent's Spirit Links do nothing, and they have to end your turn to Mega Revolve. But it's not just the Pokemon that make these dark decks so good. Although, make no mistake, they are pretty gosh darn good. It is the help they've got. Now, in terms of dark specific help, we've basically only actually got two things. Firstly, we've got Dark Patch. It allows you to attach a dark energy from your discard pile to one of your benched dark Pokemon. Now, obviously, this is exceptionally useful, because let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, as I've already mentioned, what we want to do is get a whole bunch of dark energy on these dark Pokemon as fast as we can. And this will only be helped by using this dark patch card to attach more energy. And we've got a couple of stadiums, one being far better than the other. We've got Shadow Circle, which takes away your weakness if you've got a dark energy attached. Nobody plays this. One of the reasons is, between Evil Tally X and Dark Rye EX, you are covering your weakness. Now, don't get me wrong. Some decks really focus on Evil Tal. Some decks really focus on Dark Rye. But you've always got that option. No, the far better stadium, and the stadium that's seeing a lot more play at the moment, is Reverse Valley. Now, this is one of those stadium cards that do different things to different sides of the table. The side you don't care about reduces damage done to metal Pokemon by 10. Boo-hoo, nobody cares. We're talking about dark decks. You do 10 more damage. And we've already seen how useful that can be. The new Darkrai EX does 170 with the second attack with a stadium in play. That goes from not KOing EXs like Evil Tal EX, Caldeo EX, etc. to KOing them. And things like a baby Evil Tal. Instead of doing 100 damage to a Shaman and not actually doing enough to get the KO, he's now doing 110 to a Shaman EX, and that means you can get a KO on an EX with a non-EX, and that is going to jump ahead in the prize race. If you're taking two prizes at a time and your opponent's taking one, it doesn't take a genius to figure out you are likely to get to six prizes before them. But there's a whole bunch of support that, although not being dark specific, it can be used by other decks, really does help out these dark decks. So let's run through these moderately quickly. Hypnotostic Laser and Verbank City Gym. You get Automatic Poison, which with Verbank City Gym does 30 damage between turns, and you've got a 50% chance of putting them to sleep, which means that Darkrai does 160, not 80. Now, usually with Hypnotoxic Laser, you've got a 50% chance of putting them to sleep, and then if they go to sleep, they've got a 50% chance of waking up on their turn. Well, that's not really an issue here, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to put them to sleep to smash with Darkrai. Now, don't get me wrong, in some games you will want to put them to sleep and hope they stay, but if you're using Breakpoint Darkrai, you can keep them, you can put them asleep with Hypnotosic Laser, and they never get a chance to wake up, which is a little bit sad, but unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is the point of your deck. That is what you're trying to do. 
And of course, 30 damage between turns, that's 30 after your turn, 30 after theirs, it helps you to hit these numbers much more quickly. It's one of the things that makes Fright Night Evil Tau so much better in Expanded than in Standard, because in Expanded you have laser, and in Standard you don't. We've also got a couple of tools which are very, very useful. Muscle Band does 20 more damage. Again, it helps you to just build up this damage. These dark decks are what I like to call very efficient. You get their fast decks that get up to do this damage quite quickly, and Muscle Band helps. But a lot of dark decks now are going away from Muscle Band to Fighting Fury Belt. It only adds 10 more damage rather than 20, but of course, if you use Reverse Valley, and Fighting Fury Belt, you're adding 20 damage anyway, 10 for the belt and 10 for the valley. And it adds 40 HP, 210 HP Evil Tau, 220 HP Darkrai, 170 HP Baby Evil Tau. Do remember that you can't use a Fighting Fury Belt on the Fright Night Evil Tau, the newer Evil Tau, because it stops all tools having an effect, not just your opponent's. Now, do spare a thought for Dark Claw, which was a dark only muscle band, which there is no point playing it. Muscle band does the same thing. Although, in a dark only deck, in expanded, you know, could be fun. And the other card which has helped these dark decks is Max Elixir. This is the card that allows you to look at the top six cards of your deck, and if you find a basic energy card there, you can attach it to one of your benched basic Pokemon. But as we've already mentioned, all of these dark Pokemon tend to be basic, which means you can attach extra dark energy. And as we've said on a number of occasions already in this video, you want to get dark energy on the field as soon as you can. And that is really, really helped with Max Elixir as long as you're playing enough energy. It means that you can go ahead and play speed lists where you try and get these cards and these energy out as soon as you possibly can. Going ahead and getting all of these energy on as fast as possible so that you can really be hitting big damage with Evil Tally X and with Darkrai EX. Now, if you're not playing a list focused on pure speed, Max Elixir isn't much good. But the point is, there is the option of doing so, and that is very useful indeed. So now let's take a quick look at other Pokemon we can be using. Now make no mistake, the Pokemon I've gone through already, they are the main ones. They're the ones on which we're going to be focusing. But there are some other Pokemon that some people choose to use. So first of all, we've got Archeops and Gallade. And we're going to do these together. Long story short, there is a supporter card, Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. You can only play it if it is the only card in your deck, and it allows you to put a fighting Pokemon on your bench as if it were a basic, although technically it doesn't count as a basic, and then draw till you've got five cards in your hand. Now these are much easier to get out in the expanded format, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But really, both of these Pokemon are worth playing in Dark decks. Now, first of all, we've got Gallade, and Gallade attacks for one double colourless energy. And as we've seen from both Darkrai and Evil Tau, these Dark decks are all going to be playing double colourless energy. And what it allows you to do is do a whole bunch of damage if you've played a supporter. And you will always play a supporter pretty much every turn, as anyone who plays this game will realise. So that's pretty useful. And it just so happens that it does just enough damage to KO a Shaman EX. It does 60 damage, 130 if you play a supporter. So you play a Lysander to bring a Shaman active. You do 110 because Shaman resists you, and that is enough to get the KO. But the other thing about Gallade is it's got 150 HP. And that is not easy to KO for a lot of decks. So you end up with a fairly bulky non-EX Pokemon in the active that is only giving up one prize if KO'd. And it's hitting for a whole bunch of damage. And as if that wasn't enough, you've got the ability Premonition that allows you to rearrange the top five cards of your deck i.e. it adds a little bit of consistency, you can make sure that you're drawing within reason the card you want next turn. Archeops stops your opponent evolving. Now of course there are ways around Archeops, it's an ability, so your opponent can play cards like Wobbuffet or Hex Maniac to try and turn it off, but the point is, 
that it's really, really useful. If you come across something like Omega Rayquaza deck, we'll talk about this in a little bit, it's not a great matchup for you. You play Archaeops, your opponent has no Mega Rayquaza, and if they can't hit something like a Hex or a Wobbuffet fairly quickly, they are going to lose. And any time your opponent's playing Hex or Wobbuffet, they are playing in a way that their deck doesn't want to, and that is giving you an advantage. Yeah, they can use Hex Maniac, but then they don't get to play a Shame in EX on their turn, for instance. Or at least not after they play the Hex. Or against something like a Flareon Vesperquen deck that really revolves around evolutions, a turn one Archaeops is going to be utterly, utterly crippling. Couple other decks, we've got Hypno, which turns both the active Pokemon asleep, which obviously really, really helps with Darkrai. Now, you're going to have to turn off sleep for your own Pokemon, but things like Caldeo, Floatstone, or that new stadium, All Night Party, may well help you to do so. I suppose in Expanded, you could also play Mana, but it only turns your opponent asleep on a coin flip, so it's not quite as good as Hypno. Now, a couple other Pokemon which see a little bit of play, there's Zoroark, that sees more play in Standard, and it tends to in Expanded. Zoroark is moderately useful. The Breakthrough Zoroark has an ability very much like Caldeo EX. He can go in the active retreat. He acts as a perpetual switch. He's also got Mind Jack, which attacks for a double colorless energy, which of course is useful because you're playing double colorless energy. And it does 10 damage plus 30 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now, of course, they can try and limit their bench to limit the amount of damage you're doing. But as I said... We, as I said previously, if your opponent is playing in a way to slow you down, that means they're not playing the way they want to be playing, and that is very good news for you. It's also got Zoroark Break, that for one energy, one dark energy, you can copy any of your ac opponent's active Pokemon's attacks, which can be very, very useful. There's also Absol in Expanded. He's not very good, but let, let's acknowledge the fact that he technically exists. So let's have a quick look then and have a, have a quick gander at different ways to play this. Now, I'm not going to spend too long on this because I've explained this quite nicely recently, but there are a few different ways to play this. So let's, let's have a quick gander. Firstly, there is a Maxis build. Use Maxis Hidden Ball Trick and use cards like Gallade and Archaeops. Now, if you're going to play this build, there's a couple things to bear in mind. Firstly, you are going to have to build it in order to use Maxis. That means you're going to need more Battle Compressor, so you can get the Gallade or Archaeops and the Maxis in your discard pile. It's much easier to reuse Maxis with VS Seeker. You are going to have to play a Jirachi EX, so that you've got a better chance you can play something like an Ultra Ball to get a Jirachi in order to get a Maxis, if you've got nothing else in your hand. And you would even consider playing a card like Execute, so that you can use his ability to put him in your hand, i.e. if you need to discard two cards to empty your hand, you don't put Execute in your hand. But if you've got an Ultra Ball and one card in hand, then you can use Execute, bring him into your hand, discard Execute and the other card with Ultra Ball, get a Jirachi, and off you go. You can also play a speed build, by which I mean you focus on Dark Patch and Max Elixir, and you really go for speed. If you're going for pure speed, might I suggest Darkrai from Breakpoint, purely because he does the attack for two energy, but you do the attack more damage based on the amount of energy attached to all of your Pokemon. And then when Darkrai goes down, you're only losing two energy. Now, I've seen some lists for this that don't even play double colorless because Dark Patch works on basic dark, Max Elixir works on basic dark. So it is, and of course, the attack on Darkrai does extra damage. It does 40 damage if you've got two dark on, or 40 extra damage, and zero extra damage if you've got a DCE. So a whole bunch of dark energy, Max Elixir, and Dark Patch. You can play a deck which focuses on Fright Night Evil Tau, using double colorless energy and indeed, maybe even using Max Elixir as well, 
And the idea here is that you use Friday Night Evil Tal every turn, and you're picking off stuff like Shaman, two-hit KOing it on the bench with Fright Night Evil Tal while you're attacking. Those are free options. You could also play a very measured build with Evil Tal EX and Oblivion Wing Evil Tal, so you can build up a bit slowly with Baby Evil Tal before smashing with Evil Tal EX. I don't have the time to go into every single build of these dark decks and even if I tried ladies and gentlemen I'd missed one and somebody in the comments will call me an idiot anyway so the last question we really want to look at today is how do we beat these and the answer is well that's kind of the point you don't dark decks are very unusual in that it's not that they beat everything and it's not that they lose to everything they tend to go 50 50 in most matchups I'll give you some examples Raikou eels or indeed, Manectric. And you look at both of these decks, Raikou Wheels and Manectric, and you go, aha, -ha, these are decent electric attackers. They are going to be able to destroy Baby Evil Tal and Evil Tally X. I myself was testing a Raikou Eels list for an expanded regional recently, and it all seemed like a really good idea. Until your opponent goes nuts with Darkrai. Gets a breakpoint Darkrai, gets a whole bunch of dark energy on the field and just runs through you. Now if I'm playing if, if I'm playing against one of these lists which has Evil Tally X as the main attacker and I play Raikou Eels and I sit there and I lick me proverbial chops, that Evil Tal, he's going down. But if I play against a speed Darkrai list, well I'm not weak to lightning, or he's not weak to lightning I suppose I should say. And he's going to do a lot of damage very quickly. Um, something like Night March, for instance, can have a very good matchup against these decks because, of course, they can hit Evil Tally X for weakness with Jolteon and they just dump Night March in the discard pile and do a whole bunch of damage until you end up with a Dark Explorer, excuse me, well, Dark Explorers or a Breakpoint Dark, right? With a Fighting Fury Belt attached, who, I mean, a Dark Rai EX from Dark Explorers, with a Fighting Fury Bout attached, has 220 HP, and can one-hit KO a Pump Kaboo and a Bench Joltic in the same turn. Yeah. That is not great for Night March. And in order to KO it back, Night March will need 11 Night Marches in the discard, and oh yeah, they only play 12. So 11 in the discard, and then 1 in the active attacking. And yes, I know they can play things like Muscle Band and Giovanni Scheme, etc, etc. I am fully aware of this. I'm just giving you the general idea of it. Um, something like Seismitoad Giratina goes about 50-50. This is one of the better decks against Evil Tau. And the reason is, quite frankly, you can lock them by, you know, getting rid of their stadiums. And stopping them attacking with, you know, using double colorless energy. And, of course, if they're a speed build, then Seismitoad can stop them using cards like Dark Patch or Max Elixir. And if they're a more consistent build, the Evil Tau style, then Giratina stops them attaching double colorless energy tools, etc. But, again, this is not something that's going to destroy these dark decks, but it's going to have a better matchup. One of the decks I found that's really good against them is Mega Rayquaza. You get a whole bench full of Pokemon, you hit for 30 damage, times all of your bench Pokemon, and the Skyfield Stadium allows you to have up to 8 bench Pokemon. And then you can be one-hit KOing everything in their deck, and even for a breakpoint Darkrai, it's difficult to get enough damage on the... Uh, you need kind of 10 energy on the field to get the KO on this Rayquaza. But... These Rayquaza decks have terrible matchups against Raikou Eels, against Manectric, against Night March. I could keep going, but you get the idea. And even against something like Mega Rayquaza, all you need to do is drop an Archeops with Maxis, and now I can't evolve into Mega Rayquaza, so I can't win. That's all I'm going to say about the matchups, because that is how this deck works. I could tell you that Rayquaza EX beats these Dark decks all the time. And somebody, very rightly so, is going to come and counter and say, not if I get a turn one Archeops. And I can say, ah, mate, Night March, Night March destroys it. And someone else can come along and say, not if I've got a, 
Dark Explorer's Darkrai with a Fighting Fury belt attached, 220 HP, KOing a Pump Kaboo and a Bench Joltic in the same turn. And that's kind of the point of this Dark deck. It's not a simple deck. It's not a deck, going to be honest, I'm going there, Night March. It's the opposite of Night March. Night March, everyone knows what a good list looks like. It's got a whole bunch of good matchups and a few bad matchups. That ain't how Dark decks work. There's a whole bunch of different ways to play it. It beats a lot of decks. It loses to a lot of decks. But a lot of the time, it comes down to player skill. And it comes down to how you've made your list. And if I'm honest, these dark decks are very good and very favoured a lot of the time by very good players. You can make a, you know, Ryan Morehouse in the UK comes to mind. You can make a good consistent list and go, right. I'm 50-50 with everything. I've got no great matchups, no terrible matchups. I believe I can outplay whatever deck is put in front of me. Now, just to finish off, a quick word about Standard. You lose a couple of things. Now, one of the things about Standard is that, you know, that there's less options. So, just to run through them very quickly, your Dark Explorer's Darkrai, that's gone. Archeops is gone. Gallade is more difficult to get out because without computer search, Jirachi EX and Execute, it's much more difficult to get them out. And you lose Absol, but nobody cares. You also lose Hypnotoxic Laser. But the matchups work the same, and Evil Talon Standard is very similar. You can still... Oh, you lose Dark Patch as well. I probably should have mentioned that. Dark Patch is pretty huge. But you get Max Elixir, which helps to slightly mitigate that. So the loss of these cards like Laser and Archeops and Dark Patch, they hurt you a little bit. Because it does mean you've got less options. Fewer options, I should say. But other than that, it really is the ex exactly the same kind of deal. There's still many ways to play the deck. You can still make it to beat basically anything you like. And it's still pretty dosh darn good. And to be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one thing you really need to know. If I had to sum up everything about dark decks in one quick sentence, you know, that really helped to properly justify these dark decks and why they're so good... They beat Trevenant. Now make sure you like this video. You should have done it by now. We've been going for a half hour. But if you haven't liked it by now, now is your chance. Click that like button. We can be friends. Let's do it. Make sure you subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, make sure you get a friend to subscribe on your behalf. And make sure if you want to call me an idiot or add anything to the discussion, pop it down there in the comments. And of course, the most important thing... Make sure that you look after yourself until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.